So I've been asked for a while now to try out a browser called LibreWolf. And what LibreWolf is, is actually a fork of Firefox where they pull basically everything out of Firefox that could possibly track you or fingerprint you or be a security risk of any kind. So things like Firefox Sync, not there. Things like remembering your browsing history is not enabled by default. Even things like enabling website theming, which is a brand new feature of Firefox 100, is disabled by default because it requires some kind of fingerprinting capability for the browser to actually choose what theme it's going to use. So if you're going to use LibreWolf, you need to be really dedicated to privacy. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a good thing for you to be dedicated to your privacy. And I thought, well, maybe I will try this out because I need to be more privacy conscious. And I could definitely do more along that line in trying to make myself more private on the internet. So I've been using LibreWolf now for a few days. And I have some thoughts. But my overarching th thought around the whole experience is LibreWolf isn't for me. And the reason why is simply because the moment I open up LibreWolf for the first time, the first thing I immediately do is go into it or go into the settings of LibreWolf and pretty much re-enable all the things that they've taken out of Firefox in order to make a more privacy conscious browser. So I re-enable things like remembering browser history. I re-enable things like Firefox Sync. And for me, it defeats the purpose of using LibreWolf. I can see how other people who don't rely on those features would be perfectly happy not having them and would find LibreWolf a perfectly functioning browser. But for me, I couldn't use it out of the box. So let's go ahead and talk about my experience over the last couple days. So this is my LibreWolf instance, and I've tried my damnedest to not just make it Firefox. I tried for a whole day just to use it completely as it's supposed to be used. Like, I left all the settings basically the same, I didn't even give it a theme or anything like that. I just used it the way it came, comes out of the box. And it was okay, but the pro my biggest problem with it is that by default, it doesn't remember browsing history, which is, again, a good thing if you're privacy conscious. But if you close the browser often, but you want it to be, you want it to remember where you were when you closed it and reopen up those tabs when you reopen the browser, you have to have that enabled. So, that was the first thing I did once I got past the using it out of the box phase that I re-enabled. So I went into privacy and security and then I clicked on which one it was. It was uh, this one here. And then I was able to go here and click this here. I didn't actually get that to work because I ended up having to go into the configuration file and actually put the overrides in there. But that's kind of beside the point. That was the first thing I ended up having to do. And that was kind of the beginning of a slippery slope of me just changing as much as I could here to make it better for me. And by the time I was done, I had signed into the, my Mozilla account. I had re-enabled several security things here that weren't here by default. And I just felt that I was basically just using Firefox by that point. There was no purpose for me to actually use LibreWolf at all. And that's, like I said, that's kind of the bottom line, is that by the time I got to the end of my three or four day experience, I was just using Firefox. I, all of my features that I used in Firefox are here. Now, that's not necessarily true, because there are still a few things that are off, so things like ask to save logins and passwords, I have that enabled in Firefox just because it's the default. I, it's not enabled here. I can live without that because I use Bitwarden. Another thing that I've definitely done better this time is that I haven't put in a ton of extensions. So I have an ad blocker and I have my Vim extension installed. That's literally it. So I've done a better job on the extension things, but that's more of a me thing than a LibreWolf thing. I suppose LibreWolf could get some credit for that because I was thinking about it this time rather than just letting the Firefox sync sync all of my extensions over. I just clicked that off so that they don't sync over and just installed the two that I needed for sure. But I'm left to question why I would use it if I'm just going to 
for the most part, recreate the Firefox experience. Because at the end of the day, this is just Firefox. And if you're not going to leave the defaults that LibreWolf presents you, and you're going to re-enable things that are going to sacrifice your privacy in some way, for me, it just makes more sense to stick with Firefox where I have all of my extensions already enabled, all of my settings, my themes, my user chrome.css, all that stuff's already there, and I don't have to reset it up on LibreWolf, which is, it's possible to reset it up. It, it would just be like, I'd be recreating the exact same thing I'm already using. That's the problem that I see with LibreWolf. And it's not as if I don't see the point of LibreWolf, because I really do. Like... I'm leaning towards leaving it installed and allowing myself to use it when I don't need any of those other things. I would use it during periods of my day where I don't care if I close the browser and come back to it that the tabs aren't remembered. Or if I want to have it so that I'm not signed in anything, I could just use this. And it would be kind of similar to using like a private tab or something in Firefox only more private because it's not actually sending any telemetry or anything like that to Firefox. So that's a possibility for my use case of it, but I don't see a situation where I could actually use it full time simply because, like I said, I would just re-enable a lot of the features them from Firefox, therefore completely missing the point of using LibreWolf in the first place. So those are my brief thoughts on LibreWolf. I know that I probably could have done a more in-depth video on the features and the things that it actually pulls out, but my recommendation for you is to just try it. Download it from the Chaotic AUR or something like that so that you don't have to compile it and just give it a try because I don't think that anyone can really do it justice. Like I can sit here and tell blue in the face and tell you oh, it pulls out this feature and this feature and this feature. At that point, I'm really doing you no justice because it's really the only way you're going to experience this and know that it's going to be for you is to try it out and that's what i did i tried it out it's not for me but i could like i said i could see how it could be very useful for people who are really entrenched into caring about their privacy 100 percent so that those are my thoughts on libre wolf if you have comments about libre wolf or other things you can leave those in the comment section below you can follow me on twitter um, as you can see, I'm very concerned about my privacy. I'm on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can support me on Mastodon, uh, all that stuff. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux Cast. I'd like to thank my current patrons, Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Tridevil, Antoine, Uncle Bonehead, KB, Meglin, Jackson, Nathan Tools, Steve A, Separate Linux, Garrett, Samuel, TGB, Keith, Andy, Gary, Ross, Mitchell, J-Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Marnie, Eduardo, Art Center, Elliot, Ms. Lal, Merrick, Camp Dash, Lee, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Minutes, Six, Primus, TM, Arlock, One, and Philip. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.